How's it guys, this is Davey FP and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'll be going through the ultimate guide to game week one. So we're counting down the days to that game week one dead on a reminder. It's going to be happening on Friday evening if you guys are based in the UK time zone. But don't worry, if you're not, I'll be doing a deadline stream one hour before the deadline. So make sure those bell notifications are turned on or you guys will at least follow me over on Twitter. I always do an announcement when I do go live so that way you guys won't miss the deadline. Now, if you guys are kind of an OG to the channel, you'll know that every single game week I do an ultimate guide. We're going to discuss the most relatable talking points, the best fixtures, the best captains, and go over the stats review to each upcoming game week. So obviously in this video, the stats won't be that kind of up to date. We haven't had any kind of football played. So we're kind of skipping over that section, but I have a lot more talking points to actually go over. So hopefully those final drafts are coming along and maybe some of these talking points will help you finish them. So that's something you guys are interested in. Sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. Use Fantasy Football Fix to help win your mini leagues. Their new Elite XI tool helps you track the world's best managers live, giving you access to the minds of some of the best managers in the world with over 80 top 10k finishers. You'll get game week by game week analysis of their teams, as well as instant team change push notifications from their app available on iOS as well as Android. Get started now for free using the link in the description and get free access to the game week one deadline. So the first talking point is going to be the best fixtures. I'll be going over the best attacking and the best defensive fixtures purely for game week one. Now these ratings are from Fantasy Football Fix. They have a fixture analyzer. Obviously you guys can extend this kind of game week schedule. You can go to kind of six game weeks, eight game weeks, whatever you guys want. But I'll only be looking at game week one. So let's go over the attacking fixtures. I'll be going over the six best attacking fixtures. I want to go over them first because they're slightly more exciting than the defensive ones. And don't worry, there are some differences between the best attacking and the best defensive fixtures. So on the left-hand side, you guys can see the top six sides. The top team is going to be the best fixture, and it's going to be in descending order. So yes, Brighton have the best attacking fixture. According to Fix, they have Luton at home. Obviously, newly promoted side. Can't exactly rate these newly promoted sides because we haven't seen them in the Prem last season. But I'm pretty certain that Brighton should at least score a few goals in this one. So if you guys do have a Brighton attacker, definitely one fixture to target. I generally think with their attackers, it's not really kind of game week one we worried about. It's from game week three onwards. So could these options even be campsy considerations if they do have the easiest fixture? You guys tell me in the comments down below. Next up is the second team. It's going to be Nottingham Forest at home for Arsenal. A lot of us do own these assets. Probably a double up or even a triple up. And I myself have a double up in that attack. So this should be quite a fruitful game for those Arsenal attackers, your Martellis, your Odegaards and your Bakai Suckers. And whoever starts up front, it might be Havertz or it might be Trossard. But a massive fixture to target for those goals, and let's hope that Arsenal score a few. Then there was a kind of surprise entry here, so Fix is saying the third best fixture is actually Brentford against Spurs. Now I don't exactly know what goes into consideration for these best attacking stats, but I do think it's a combination of both teams. So if you guys watched Spurs last year, you'll know that Spurs defense was not great at all. So what the model's probably predicting is that they're going to continue that trend, but just remember that Spurs have a new manager. But if you guys have watched Spurs in preseason, you know their manager is a very attacking one, so there might be a few goals for both of the sides. But I think most of us do own an Mbumo, maybe even doubled up with the Visa up front. So that's looking quite good. Then we have Bournemouth against West Ham at home. So quite a similar situation to I think Spurs. West Ham weren't the best side last season. Bournemouth actually had a pretty decent attack. But I don't know if I necessarily agree with this one. So I've seen literally no Bournemouth attackers, not even Bournemouth players in most people's drafts. So are we actually missing a good fixture? I don't really know, I think that West Ham usually are quite defensively assured, but just remember they have just lost Declan Rice, which I think will impact the defense quite a bit. Moving on to the next team, Everton against Fulham at home, understandable. Fulham were probably the worst defense in the Prem last season, conceding a bunch of XG and big chances. Now Dan Juma might be playing out of position as a kind of midfielder rating, could replace Calvert Lewin up front, or DCL could actually come back into the lineup. So if you guys can kind of predict who's going to start up front for Everton against Fulham, they could be absolute gold as they are quite cheap. But for the time being, probably avoid them until DCL shows more fitness. In the final team like Arsenal, probably have a double up in that four department. Most of us have Bruno and also Rashford or at least one of them. And against Wolves at home, I agree this is a good attacking fixture. What I will say though, is I don't really think that United will go out and win 4-0, 5-0. I think maybe 3-0 is a maximum. 2-0 is probably more likely as United don't score the most goals in the world. But still, should be a comfortable win for those United assets. So fingers crossed they're involved in the goals. Now talking about kind of United, let's go on to the defensive fixtures. And you guys will see they have the best defensive fixture in game week one. This is simply because Wolves are a pretty bad attacking side. 
The XG last season was kind of one of the worst, and that's why United's defense should hopefully get a clean sheet. So if you guys do own Luke Shaw, probably own Onana between the sticks, this could be almost a guaranteed clean sheet. Same could be said about those Brighton assets, a lot of us do own a Stupanan. Uni promoted sides are quite hard to predict, generally start off the season quite well, but dip later on. So Brighton might actually concede in this one. But if you were to kind of bet on the stats, you'd probably bet against the newly promoted side, so Stupanan could be looking at a double digit return. Once again, those Arsenal assets, it's a great fixture on paper, Nottingham Forest at home. I think this should be quite a comfortable game for Arsenal, and that's why I'm perfectly fine owning one of their assets. So between Gabriel, Saliba, or even Ramsdale, who are you guys choosing from that Arsenal defence? In terms of the 4th and the 6th teams, they're actually playing each other, Crystal Palace away to Sheffield United, so what the stats might be telling us, this might be a 0-0. If I was probably to kind of estimate which game would be 0-0, it's probably going to be this one to be honest. So if you guys do have Crystal Palace defenders, or even Sheffield United ones, they could be getting a clean shot in game week 1. Then the final team, Man City, probably the best defence in the Prem at the moment, and they have Burnley away. Now once again, these newly promoted sides are quite hard to predict. You would think in game week one, first game back in the Prem for a while for these clubs, they're probably going to want to put on a show. But I do think Man City should have enough to potentially keep a clean sheet, and that's why I'm potentially looking at someone like an Edison. Otherwise, Stones, Diaz, Akanji, and Ake provide nice entries, or the new signing Guardiol, except I don't think he's going to start in game week one. But that's going to kind of conclude our defensive ratings, as well as the attacking ratings. Let me know what fixture you guys are targeting, as your starting 11s probably make up most of these teams. Now the next talking point I want to go over is a little bit of an announcement of what could potentially happen in that game week one deadline stream. So yes, we could be getting Man City team sheet leaks because they are playing the first game. You'll notice Burnley are hosting Man City on Friday. Just ignore the time as that's local South African time. But because they play the first game of game week one, we could potentially be getting some leaks of their lineup. And this could have a massive kind of implication on your squad. The reason I'm saying this, for example, just kind of pencil in a Foden or Man City defender in your team, just imagine we get news that they're going to be benched. This could be on the opposite end of the spectrum, they could be actually starting the game, you might not be considering a Foden at the moment, but as soon as you see that he starts against Burnley, you might want to bring him into your team. So what I would say here is that I would be very kind of relaxed on this kind of team sheet leak. The reason you don't have that Man City asset in your team is because there are rotation risk, and Game Week 1 isn't going to change that. So for example, if Phil Foden's going to start against Burnley, which I would probably predict, that doesn't mean that he's going to start Game Week 2 and Game Week 3. So just keep that in the back of your mind, but I know what's going to happen in Game Week 1's deadline stream. We're going to get news that a full Foden or an Alvarez is going to be starting, and everyone's going to destroy their lineups to get those players in. Now I know that Burnley's a great game on paper, but Vincent Company could put up a little bit of a fight here. But if you guys are hoping for some Man City team sheet news, let me know in the comments down below. Which player are you most looking out for? The one player that I will be probably looking out for is going to be Edison or Tega to start in the Community Shield, as expected though as Pep likes to use his second reserve goalkeepers in the cup competitions. But let's just say that Edison was going to be benched for game week one, I must say, a nice cheaper Man City goalkeeper entry, definitely is one to look at. So as I said, what team sheet news are you guys looking for? It's probably for Foden or Alvarez. Now the next talking point I want to go over has kind of gained traction over the past couple of days. It's going to be the second premium draft. So if you guys watched my video previously, I actually created a draft with Mo Salah in the midfield apartment, and it actually didn't look that bad. If you guys want a more up-to-date kind of a team, you can go look at the video I released yesterday, which is going to be the most optimal or best team from Fantasy Football Fixer's algorithm. So spoiler alert, that draft did have Salah in, but I did have him in the thumbnail already, but that team was actually pretty decent. But should you guys be going for the second premium is the big question at the moment, and obviously the two players I'm talking about are Mo Salah and also Harry Kane. So the big Harry Kane news is that Spurs rejected the latest bind bid, which does make it look like he'll be staying at Spurs. Now I have included their points from last season just to remind you guys that Harry Kane had a bang over season, outperforming Mo Salah by quite a far margin. But the one question I'll pose to you and I'll try to answer is would you guys rather go for Salah or Harry Kane in those drafts? Now the only thing that kind of is in Harry Kane's favour in my opinion is me the fact that the forward options at the moment aren't that great. We have so many midfielder options at the moment, these cheaper 6.5s, Eze, Matoma, Mbumo are all great assets, whereas up front, maybe it's Oli Watkins or Jackson. But if Nkunku's going to be missing the majority of the opening start to the season, that makes Jackson a worse option in my opinion. So yes, Harry Kane might be the better alternative just because of the lack of forward options, but I still prefer Mo Salah at the end of the day. I just feel like he's the better FPL option, the king of FPL that we have crowned him, as he gets the extra point per goal and also a clean sheet point. So out of these two assets, I just want to put this out there that I do prefer Mo Salah even though he had the worst season, and there might be a risk of Harry Kane leaving if Bayern do improve their bid. But you guys can let me in the comments down below, who would you prefer in those drafts, Mo Salah or Harry Kane, and are you guys actually going for it? 
Now, as a continuation of this kind of most solid debate, or should you guys be actually including a second premium in those drafts, I want to go over what's the difference between a most solid draft and a no solid draft. So on the left-hand side, let's just bring up the players that I did potentially have that differed from my actual no seller draft. It was obviously going to be the man himself, the king of FPL, Mo Salah. Then I've included Matoma as a 6.5 alternative, as well as Jao Pedro at 5.5 million. Now what I will add is I've taken the goalkeeper out of debate, but currently I've got Edison between the sticks. If you downgrade Edison, that's an extra 1. million in the bank. Then you guys can go for a visa over Jao Pedro. But just to make things a little bit simpler, make this kind of an only three player alternative, I've included the Brighton striker in this team. Now is he actually an alternative that you guys can go for? I don't think he's the most nailed option in the world, but he should be on penalties if he is on the pitch. And I actually do really like him as a player. So while he might not be nailed at 5.5 million, not the worst decision in the world. And with his opening three fixtures for Brighton, could be a punt to go for. But what I will add is just have a plan to get him out. I think once Nkunku's back, you might want to upgrade that forward department. And therefore you need some money in the bank. But for the time being, the left-hand side players, Mo Salah, Matoma, and Jao Pedro, let's see what we would have had in my no Salah draft. So the first player, Bruno Fernandes or Fernandes, then Martinelli, and finally Oli Watkins. So each of the players from left to right are the alternative, Mo Salah versus Bruno, Matoma versus Martinelli, and finally Jao Pedro versus Watkins. Everything else in the draft was exactly the same, had the same defense, the same goalkeepers, had Rashford, Saka still in the midfield department, as well as in Bumo. Obviously, Haaland up front also stayed constant, as I feel that he's the only essential option. So now let's compare left to right. So in terms of a player versus player, I think the most solid does outperform Bruno. We'll be going over some stats in the next talking point to back that up. But I feel like both players will have good seasons, but Mo Salah is the better option. Then between Matoma and Martelli, I think that Martelli kind of edges us slightly. This all depends on how Matoma is kind of defended. It seems like towards the end of last season, teams really kind of honed in on him. And yes, he's a great dribbler, but that doesn't always result in FPL points. So I think slightly this does edge towards Martinelli. The stats look similar between them though, but I just favor the Arsenal fixtures in the medium term. Then finally, between Jao Pedro and Oli Watkins, this is kind of a very tough debate to go over. This all depends on the unknowns. Is Jao Pedro actually going to start the majority of games? Will he actually be on penalties in the Premier League season? These are all questions that we don't exactly know. Whereas with Oli Watkins, still some uncertainties. Is he going to keep penalties after missing a few historically? Will Tielemans come onto them as he's the better taker? But the one thing that we know about Oli Watkins is that he is nailed to start. Under Emery, Aston Villa have also looked like a new side, great attacking stats, and overall just a great team structure. So in terms of this debate, I'll go for the knowns. I think that Oli Watkins is a nailed play in FPL, seeing that I would side it towards him. But I guess if you guys do look at the three players overall, I think that it's very close in this debate. The only thing that might sway me is that if Jao Pedro doesn't start any games, comes off the bench every once in a while, then I'd probably go for the right hand side. But this is where FPL is so beautiful. It's a very subjective game. In the comments down below, let me know what your thoughts are. Do you prefer the left or the right hand side? I think the big talking point that probably is going to settle it is going to be captaincy. So I spoke about this throughout the kind of preseason as the best value options is a player underpriced, overpriced. And in terms of the premium assets, they're only worth it if you guys captain them. So game week two, if you guys are really keen to captain Mo Salah, he plays Bournemouth, great game on paper. Liverpool should win that game and Mo Salah should be involved in a few goals and assists. Now, if Mo Salah does outperform Erling Haaland by quite a far margin and you've captained him, that's going to make the left-hand side much more worth it. In terms of the right-hand side, I won't be captaining Oli Watkins, I won't be captaining Martinelli or Bruno, as I'll just perma-captain Erling Haaland at the end of the day. So that's why I've said, if you guys do want to captain Mo Salah game week 2, I think it's worth it to actually go for it, but just remember that it is a risk because Erling Haaland could still do well against Newcastle. I guess that's why you guys have to consider two cases. If you're not going to captain Mo Salah in game week 2, compare the left to the right, but if you are, I do think the left-hand side potentially is going to outweigh the right. But very kind of fine margins, and as I said, very unpredictable. If Mo Salah does outperform Holland in game week 2, you're going to be absolutely singing. But if he doesn't, your start to the season might be a little bit rocky. But as mentioned, in the comments down below, let me know your thoughts on the left and the right-hand side. Currently, I'm on the right-hand side because I think that Erling Haaland is an absolute f monster. But as a Liverpool fan, my heart is aching to actually go for Mo Salah. Now the final two talking points I want to go over before the Kamsi debate is kind of extending the debate of the previous talking point as well as answering some more comparisons. So the first comparison I want to go over is we just discussed Matoma versus Martelli. If you guys do cast your eyes, they're right next to each other with similar XG and XA. So this graph was taken from my best midfielder video. It's going to be a combination of XA which is expected assists per 90 minutes and then XG on the X axis per 90 minutes as well. So both these two assets shared the almost exact same stats per 90 minutes, which is pretty impressive considering the price difference. 
So if you guys are very stats based, what you're going to be looking at is you're going to say Matoma can actually match Martelli. He is cheaper. I can afford Mo Salah, who's on the far right hand side. As you guys can see, this has almost swayed my decision. So yes, in terms of the stats, Matoma and Martelli are super close. But what I will add is over the medium term, I do think that Arsenal's fixtures are better than Brighton's. So I do expect Martelli to outperform Matoma. Will that be worth the kind of 1.5 million? I don't exactly know. And that's the tough thing about FPL. Now the next debate I want to go over is going to be a big one, obviously with the fact that Gabriel Jesus is going to miss the start of the season, a lot of us are considering our kind of triple up for Arsenal, and that's Martelly versus someone like an Odegaard. Now the first thing I will add, and I said this in my kind of best midfield video, is that both these two players have better stats than Bakai Saka, the only reason I think we own Saka is because he's on penalties. But if he does lose that, I think that Odegaard and Martelly are better FPL assets, as you can see they've got better stats. But between Odegaard and Martelli, I do prefer Martelli at the moment. Has the same kind of XA as Odegaard, but a better XG portion, which I think will be quite valuable over the opening game weeks. So yes, Odegaard is 0.5 more expensive, kind of more nailed for starts, but I do think Martelli offers a more explosive asset. And if you guys are worried about some potential rotation, he will come off the bench anyways if he doesn't start, and could rack up some attacking returns against a tied defense. But if you want to go for more nailed minutes, Odegaard is the man to go for, as long as you guys can afford that 0.5 upgrade. Then the next debate to go over is going to be Bruno Fernandes or Fernandes versus Rashford. You guys can see the opposite ends of the kind of spectrum. Bruno is more of an assister, whereas Rashford is more of a scorer. That's personally why I do prefer Rashford, and with the current new striker that they've just signed being injured for the start of the season, I think that Rashford will play up front, which is great. An out of position midfield is always what we dream of in FPL, but I'm actually going for both these two assets because what I hope happens is that Bruno assists and Rashford scores. So just those kind of close 50-50s, we have another one, Mbumo or Matoma. Matoma has slightly better stats, but Mbumo is more of a talisman for Brentford. And because Fix is saying that the fixture against Spurs is actually quite easy, I think I'm definitely locking on to Mbumo. Other assets though are going to be Eze, but his stats aren't that great. And to be honest, Crystal Palace attacking stats aren't too great as well. So we've gone over a lot of 50-50s, they're quite hard to call in terms of the stats. But I hope you're giving you guys some more clarity on those tough decisions in those final drafts. Final point though, in terms of Mo Salah, you guys can just see his stats are simply outstanding. His XG is off the charts, and he does like a few assists as well. Let me in the comments down below, has this talking point given you any more clarity on who to go for in terms of Salah or no Salah? I think the close stats of Matoma Martelli makes this even harder to decide. Then the final talking point to go over before we discuss our captains for game week 1 is going to be who to replace Gabriel Jesus or Nkunku with. Now first things first, obviously Jackson won't be here has just come to the Premier League for Chelsea, so his stats won't be here from the previous Prem season. We do have Oli Watkins, and his stats aren't actually that great. Now I say this, but when you guys compare him to kind of other strikers, it's always tough to compare kind of less minutes to more minutes. The reason I'm saying that, for example, let's just say that Oli Watkins played every game last season, which he kind of did, versus someone like an Enketia, who was only used really as a sub. Obviously, you would choose Oli Watkins because he's played the majority of more minutes, so therefore his stats have averaged better, versus a play off the bench every once in a while. So don't look into these Oli Watkins stats too much. I do think under Emery that he has improved dramatically, as that whole team has. But I just want to put this out there that don't expect the award from kind of Oli Watkins. I'd say he's more of a placeholder in my own team. As I wait for more clarity on a play like a Darwin Nunes, or to upgrade him to Wilson when the fixtures do turn. Also, when Nkunku comes back from injury, hopefully it's going to be relatively soon. I can see myself doing that Oli Watkins to Nkunku move quite quickly. But if you guys are looking for some other alternatives, there are some on screen here. I think that Callum Wilson, if he starts up front, is going to be a great asset. Darwin Nunes also has good stats if you guys want to take a punt. Otherwise, there's a few options in and around Watkins that could also provide some alternatives. Let me know in the comments down below who's your alternative at that current moment. I think most people are going for Jackson or Watkins. They still want to keep that kind of price structure, that flexibility in their drafts. Or you go much cheaper for a Jao Pedro who we've already spoken about. So let me in the comments down below, what's your front two looking like? Are you going for a front three even? Who are your strikers currently? Now the last talking point to go over is going to be all about captaincy. We always end these ultimate guides discussing the best captaincy options, and there might be actually a surprise for you guys. So let's go over my three favorite at the moment. It's going to be Bakai Saka from Arsenal. You ask me to go for Martelli or Odegaard, but I do prefer Saka. More kind of nail to start, is on penalties, and almost a talisman. Then there's no Kamsi kind of decision without Erling Haaland. He's going to be our second option. He has Burnley away. Great fixture on paper. And then finally Matoma with that kind of punt fixture against Luton at home. So out of these three assets, you guys would have seen the fixture ratings. Arsenal have the best fixture on paper against Nottingham Forest at home. But Man City can score against literally anyone. Also really like the Matoma fixture. Nice punt fixture. But I feel like owning him might be differential enough. Even though he is quite highly owned. 
So here's where things are a little bit spicy. I'm going to go over the projected points or the predicted points from Fantasy Football Fix. And they're saying Bakai Saka is the best captain to go for. He's projected to score 6.8 points, Erling Haaland on 5.8, then finally Matoma on 4.6. So yes, if you guys are going to follow the fix algorithm, it's telling you to captain Bakai Saka. And I know there are other prediction sites that are saying the same. I think it's just because the fixture is simply better than Nottingham Forest at home fixture. Home fixtures are always targeted from an attacking point of view. Maybe the algorithm is telling you that Burnley are going to pull an upset. Added to this fact, Erling Holland didn't have the best kind of community shield. I think a 0xG was produced in that game. But you guys know, he needs one chance to score. And maybe that chance didn't arrive on Sunday. Now, would I advise captaining against Erling Haaland? Probably not. Let's go look at his ownership at the current moment. I know you shouldn't be scared of effective ownership. But starting off game week one and Erling Haaland scores a hattie. While Bakasaka blanks and you captain him. Might just put you off FPL for the entire season. So yes, at the moment, I'm going to go for Erling Haaland and I'd probably advise that. But you can't help to think that Bakaya Saka might actually be the better captain. Or do you guys think Matoma is the best captaincy option to go for? Drop in the comments down below. And if you are going against Erling Haaland captaincy, who are you going for? But this is basically going to wrap up the video, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like if you did and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. If you have any other talking points you want to go over, drop them in the comments down below. I reply to every single comment. But I try to get every talking point covered in this video. Otherwise, show me what that final draft is looking like. I'll be posting my team selection tomorrow, and I'll let you guys know if there are any red flags in your current team. But I'm going to sign off. This has been Davey FPL, and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.